Hi everyone, again welcome to the course of structural biology. Today we are already in the module of MD simulation and today we are going to talk about data analysis. So MD simulation data analysis. I have discussed about the steps in molecular dynamic simulation multiple time. We have built realistic atomistic model of the system. We have picked up the PDB, we have cleaned the PDB and repaired if there was necessity to repair and what I get is what is in front of you. The next step was to simulate. Simulation process we divide into three steps, system processing, then minimization and equilibration run and then final production run. Let us take a quick look. So, first in the system processing we start with the clean PDB we got from RCSB experimental or from model and then worked on it. This one we apply PDB to GMX which is the conversion from a coordinate to the Gromex competent version with other softwares like Amber, NMD, Charm, they have their own format like that. We got a dot grow file which is Gromex competent file. Then we apply edit conf which gives us a new box. So you will see that you have the structure and where you add the hydrogens, then you have the new box and finally you solve it, it you see the box is now solvated. Then we go to the next step where we have the protein underscore solve dot grow file and which is the main file a tuple dot top associated file and we add ions dot mdp. So ions dot mdp dot grow and dot top file together they develop a ions dot tpr file and then by gen ion they put the ions which you see here. So now starting from a structure we come to somewhere where we could perform the real uh, simulation. So first step is minimization where we take that dot grow file again minim dot mdp and tuple dot top file is coming. We apply grom pp which we apply in the last step either. We got em dot tpr and then we do the first md run. We got energy minimization dot grow em dot grow as a main file as a associated file. We got em dot edr which is energy file em dot log which is a log file having all the information and em dot prr which is a trajectory file. With this em dot grow file we do equilibration which is an ensemble run which is NVT condition and we got NVT dot grow with the same procedure as the main file NVT dot CPT which is checkpoint file NVT dot EDR which is energy file NVT dot log which is log file and NVT dot TRR which is trajectory file. Same type of equilibration is again performed but this time instead of NVT we perform NPT as ensemble condition, we got NPT dot grow, with that we got NPT dot CPT in which is again check point file, NPT dot EDR which is energy file, NPT dot log which is log file and NPT dot TRR which is trajectory file. With minimization and equilibration run performed, now we come and both of them I did not talk about were 100 picosecond and now we come to the final run with the file npt dot grow. Again we make a conversion of tpr file by the command grom pp having dot mdp dot grow and dot top file. And the tpr file was performed with md run with 100 nanosecond final md simulation run performed for each system. What we got? We got md underscore 0 underscore 1 dot grow which is a gromax competent file. 
MD underscore zero underscore one dot XTC and MD underscore zero underscore one dot TRR. So TRR I have already talked about, which is a trajectory file, but because you know after hundred nanosecond of run, there would be so many or so high volume of uh, huge volume of file, we actually make a zipped version which is the .xtc. I already talked about .cpd, the checkpoint file. The checkpoint files are used if for any reason your MD simulation run is stopped, then you could start again from the checkpoint file without losing information. Interestingly, because it's a 100 nanosecond run, we have done a double check here md underscore 0 underscore 1 underscore previous dot checkpoint, a another checkpoint file is there. Dot edr, the energy file is there and dot log. And after the production run, we get so many snapshots which actually give us a movie you look at this beautiful movie this is the end result of the md simulation run so again coming to this slide the steps in molecular dynamic simulation the building of realistic atomistic model of the system is done simulation with three steps preparation minimization and equilibration and production run is done so now we have to go for what we are here today, analyze the result obtained from MD and relate to macroscopic level properties. Remember, I talked about MD is the modeling and in this MD simulation system, what we are trying is the interconversion, the understanding of a model system and compare it with the experimental system and then from the comparison, we put more input to the model system and in a cyclical manner, it would be becoming relatively more realistic with more or multiple time you run the cycle, you get the result, you compare the result, you learn from it and you update your MD simulation system. So going to the data analysis, we have successfully run the simulation of our protein what should be the next move? The next move is analysis of data. What type of data are important? Now, here I want to give a stop because this is a very critical juncture where you should all think about. When we are talking about a procedure like MD simulation process, this is totally unrelated to what you want to get. What I mean is when you do an experiment like if you perform a spectroscopic spectroscopic experiment, you need a spectroscope. It might be UV, it might be fluorescence, it might be circular dichroism. Which one you need depends on what questions you are asking. Similarly, and a lot of people misunderstand this step. People think you perform a MD simulation and you start getting results. The results are not dependent on the process of the simulation. The results are dependent on the experimental design you have done. So, remember that. So, I also wrote it clearly. There are two different processes. One is the process of simulation and second, the getting result out of it. You should have some ideas about the type of data you want to collect in your own system. More you understand, more you design the experiment in such a way, better the outcome of the experiment. The first step is visualizing trajectories. As I told, you have a force field, you put a force on your sample, it would be going up and down, so you will create a trajectory. VMD is our favorite software for molecular dynamics visualization. Actually, if you remember I talked about visualization softwares, 
VMD is a visualization software used for looking at protein and many other purpose, but it was actually developed for molecular dynamics. That is why the name VMD came from visualizing molecular dynamics. It provides variety of easy to use GUI tools for trajectory analysis. To watch a Gromex trajectory in VMD, first you load the .grow file and then select load data into molecule and load the .xtc or .trr. I will prefer .xtc because of the reduced size of the file and when you load them into the .grow structure, you prefer to load the structure from the common line, you issue vmd common grow underscore file dot grow xtc underscore file dot xtc and this will load the xtc file into the grow structure automatically, you will see the outcome of the trajectory. But before you go for visualizing and analyzing, there is one step you should always perform. The step is called TRJCONV, T R J C O N V, which is used as a post processing tool to strip out the coordinates, all the coordinates, correct for periodicity or manually alter the trajectory, time units, frame frequency, etc. For doing this, we will use TRJCONV to account for any periodicity in the system. The protein in time of run might diffuse to the unit cell or may appear broken or may jump across to the other side of the box. All those things could be corrected. We will clear the periodic boundary condition and the protein would be central position with respect to the solvent box. After performing this, we will get the corrected trajectory. And after all the analysis I am talking next, we will use this corrected trajectory because here the mistakes happen are corrected. So, how you process you as I told you get the final dot xtc or the trajectory file and you have the md dot tpr file. I have talked about this earlier. But the TPR file extension stands for Protable Binary Run Input File. This file contains the starting structure of your simulation, the molecular topology and the simulation parameters. Now you will give command. GMX command will give you .xbg depending on what you are putting here. You could put RMS you could put RMSA like that. Now you get .xbg file. So from your .xtc and .tpr file, you get .xbg file. This .xbg file format could be displayed in graphical form through the GRACE program. GRACE is a popular Unix program uh, which helps you to get the graphical representation. Whereas, if you are not in Unix or Linux system, you are using Windows, then you use GNU plot program. XBG files are plain text files containing tabular data separated by tabulators and two type of comments which contain the data labels. Now, because it is a plain text file, so you could understand that you could do manual editing of the file directly, but considering when you run the entire simulation, the file would be huge, it would not be a realistic idea to edit it manually, you should take the help of the system automation. The programming modules. So, I told that you have to design your own experiment, but there are some analysis modules generally people follow. Yes, there are. So, root mean square deviation where I will talk about details, root mean square fluctuation, 
radius of gyration, solvent accessible surface area, principal component analysis, normal mode analysis, energy calculation, protein ligand distance. I wrote it protein ligand distance, but it could be protein with DNA, protein with protein, any type of differences you are looking after the simulation run. Intramolecular distances, dihedral angles, many things you could get information from your simulation run. We will discuss few in details for your learning. Coming to root mean square deviation. In the field of bioinformatics, the root mean square deviation of atomic positions or simply root mean square deviation is the measure of the average distance between the atoms of superimposed proteins. What it means? It means suppose you have a protein. You have the protein let us say this is a protein and the protein now moves here. How you could measure this? What you do? You take this carbon C alphas. So, let us say this is C alpha 1 from a position and C alpha 1 from B position. Each of them have their coordinates. So, x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2. The distance, if you remember, would be root over x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square plus z2 minus z1 square. RMSD is the average of all those distances, the all the C alphas present in the entire protein. So, let us see how it goes. The RMSD calculation can determine the special differences between backbone atom present in the protein throughout the simulation time. If you look at this is the comparison and you get the delta 1, RMSD is root over 1 by n summation i equal to 1 to n delta i square, where delta i is the distance between two different position of atom i during the simulation, RMSD can be measured either for C alpha atom or backbone heavy atom, n is the total time scale in a simulation. So, if you look at RMSD is very critical because when you run the simulation, you want to see the displacement, you want to see the movement and the best and easy way of determining this is to get the root mean square deviation value. RMSD in protein are calculated in respect with the initial structure at the start of the simulation. So, remember when we start, we have a starting structure, starting PDB. Now, you get further snapshots and you compare the deviations. The smaller the differences, the more specially equivalent the compared structures are, whereas more distantly related structures are defined by comparatively greater RMSD values when you are comparing between two different structures. In case of simulation, you want to see that you have an initial structure. Is it deviated throughout the simulation? Let us say you put heat. So, what is the effect of the heat? Let us say you increase the pH. What is the effect of the pH on the deformity? If the structure is affected, if the non-covalent bonds are broken, all these things as a primary measure you could use RMSD.
structural changes specifically the deviation between two structures can be best interpreted by using the graph obtained after calculating RMSD from the MD simulation trajectories. What type of graph? Remember I told when you have the simulation trajectory you apply the Gromax command and you get the .xbg file. Now in the .xbg file when you do grace program or GNU plot you will get the graph. We will see it next. RMSG of protein structures throughout simulation both in its ligand bound and unbound form could also be calculated like you have a EPO structure and you have a ligand bound structure. Is the ligand bound structure make it stabilized? Is the EPO structure is more flexible? All those information you could get primarily through RMSD. How you work on RMSD? As I told, you take the .xtc file, you have the .tpr file and you apply Gromax RMSD or RMS and you get R they generally use two type of RMSD. I think more popularly they use jmx.rms. You get rmsd.xbg, you apply xmgrace and you get the graph where you are putting RMSD with time and see you see the changes between the initial structure and the different other structure. Coming to RMSF which is root mean square fluctuation. RMSF calculate the fluctuation of C alpha atom in a residue of a protein in comparison with the respective average structure throughout the simulation. Increased residual RMSF value indicate the instability in protein backbone. So if you see high value of RMSF that means the protein is either not stable or flexible. RMSF is calculated as square root of 1 by t summation tj equal to 1 to t xi tj minus xi whole square where t is the duration of the simulation time steps and xi tj the coordinates of atom xi at time t. The sum of the square difference of the mean coordinate xi and xi tj is calculated by the above mentioned equation which we could see. So what is the workflow? Similar here you have again the .xtc file, you have the .tpr file, you apply gmx rmsf, you get rmsf.xbg, then you apply xmgrace and you see the graph again rmsf with respect to the residue number. So if you see you will see the individual residues here and you will see their fluctuation in different structure. Some people might wonder what is the difference? RMSD is also talking about deviation. RMSF is also talking about fluctuation which is deviation. So what is the difference? There is a huge difference. When you are going for RMSD, you are looking for a average change in the total structure. But when you are performing RMSF, you are looking at individual residues. RMSF informations are extremely critical for mechanistic derivation. What I am talking about? I am talking about if you are looking at the behavior of a protein in its APO form and substrate bound form by analyzing the particular residues RMSF value, you could differentiate how it behaves at its APO form and how differently it behave with binding to different ligands. So you get a mechanistic view of how will a ligand bind, how much stabilization it could provide to the structure, what 
type of interaction is happening and all those. Interestingly, if you remember, in the PDB file, we have something called B factor, right? B factor of the average structure, you could also get from the simulation and from there, you could compare it with the experimentally available structure. So, this is also something which gives you an opportunity to compare. Coming to hydrogen bond in protein, we have talked multiple times and I don't think people who are learning here in this point, they all understand that how important non-covalent bonds are and especially hydrogen bonds which are like energetically less in contribution but more in number so that together effect is huge. So, in simulation, we want to see the breaking and making of hydrogen bonds to get an idea how the protein switch kind of how it have distortion or change in conformation like this. So, I do not need to say that, but hydrogen bond in protein structure are crucial in maintaining the functional 3D conformation of protein as well as proper binding with the substrate. The variation in length of a particular intramolecular hydrogen bond within a protein structure or intermolecular hydrogen bond between two interacting protein or hydrogen bond involved in protein ligand interaction could be measured throughout the MD simulation run or for a specific time scale. Now, it is very important to understand. You know, that is what a dynamics is giving you. Like, if I say, that I hold this pen, it would not give you the specific information, this pen is held tightly or loosely by me. But if you put the whole system under simulation so that a force would be given and you calculate the hydrogen bond distances throughout the run, if you find that the distance of hydrogen bond always kept a good hydrogen bonding allowed distance or not, depending on that, you could comment a substrate or inhibitor is bound to a protein strongly or tightly. This information you could not get from the static structures. So, this is representation again where hydrogen bond length and time scale are given. Workflow, index file preparation considering the two interacting atom of a hydrogen bond. Here you have to talk about which bond you want to. em.grow file obtained from energy minimization as input. You have to put the common gmx make underscore ndx to index file mentioned to interacting atoms with their numbering as per the PDB file and dot NDX file containing the particular hydrogen bond. So, final dot XTC file, the trajectory file and the MD dot TPR file, GMX hydrogen bond and with the N dot NDX file you generated here, you get that distance dot XBG, you apply XM grace, you get a 2D plot. Coming to the dihedral angle analysis in protein, again students who are following this course, it is not surprising to you that whenever we are looking for protein movement, it is about the dihedral angles because initially like mainly the backbone, the phi psi, then the chi's, they are determining when they are changing, you could take the changing spectrum and comment on the dynamic nature of the protein. So, dihedral angles, phi psi angle determination for a specific residue in protein is important to detect the mechanical importance of that particular residue in maintaining any local conformation. Using the MD simulation trajectory of a protein, variation in residual dihedral angle can be measured throughout the total MD run or a specific time scale. You see, here I talked about, you see here, 
two chi's so in the tryptophan so you get this representation the dihedral angle with the change of the time in picosecond when you consider cysteine there is one chi and when you consider glutamine there is three chi's and how they are fluctuating depending on that you could have see the change on the dynamic nature of the protein workflow here also you need to prepare the index file so index file preparation considering the atoms involved in dihedral angle of a particular residue in protein because for dihedral for hydrogen bond you have to mention the particular residues that's why you need to do the index filing em dot grow file obtained from energy minimization you will use it as input gmx make underscore ndx and then mention the atoms with their numbering as per the pdb file you get the dot ndx file containing the particular dihedral angle now it's the same thing you have the final dot xtc file you get the dot tpr file you apply the gmx gmx rama and you add the dot ndx file containing the information about the dihedral angle you get angle dot xbg you apply xm grace you get the 2d plot so you need we are talking about trajectory but you need the pdb files how you convert the trajectory file the dot xtc or dot trr file to coordinate file pdb file to capture the pdb coordinate file of a protein from a particular time scale of md simulation dot xtc trajectory file can be used to convert it into a dot pdb file this converted pdb files can be further used in study any significant structural characteristics like normal mode analysis determination of intramolecular and intermolecular bonding patterns protein ligand binding energy etc so if you see this is a rmsd versus time plot now if you select this trajectory and get different time points of the trajectory and get the snapshots so as i told this is the rmsd of the trajectory and you identify the snapshots from the pdb file what you will do you get the final dot xtc file and dot tpr file then you do dump specific time in picosecond which is chosen here in this file and you apply gmx trajconf for total system or gmx make dot ndx for selection when you want to select you could have the whole system you could have specific point as i told in case of hydrogen bond in case of dihedral if you want everything you go with the dot xtc if you want particular you have to make index similarly here for total system for particular one you will convert it to dot pdb file which is the coordinate file from there you could get binding energy calculation you could do normal mode analysis you could go to pymol vmd chimera coot and you could do the visualization in case of binding energy calculation you could also take the energy file dot edr file but now the advanced programs are already picking up the information coming to principal component analysis or pca PCA gives us idea about the protein backbone motion along the md simulation trajectory and hence to understand the pattern of protein fine folding loop movement etc protein motion is mostly described by the first two eigen vector and their eigen values if you compare between rmsd and pca both of them are actually calculating the change 
but there is a huge difference because in RMSD there is only value. Here, principal component analysis you have the eigen vector. So, there is a vector, there is a value. So, there is a directionality. What is principal component? In the linear algebra, principal component is used where you see the comparison between two and you make or choose a principal component where you see the maximum deviation. And then you choose PC2, the prin second principal component, which is unrelated to principal component 1, and then calculate the covariance. So, as I told, PC1 and PC2, you get the degrees of freedom, and you get that 2D projection, which will show how the protein is deviated. So, for studying protein dynamics to find structural modes, to find cavities where you get the binding modes, correlation of evolution, PCA is used. How PCA workflow happen? Again, you need the final .xtc and md.tpr file. You perform GMX cover. You get eigenval.xvg, eigenvec.trr, and cover.xpm. Now you use the final .xtc and md.tpr file with GMX naing. You get proj.xbg and ev.pdb. Now, this is coming from first principal component or the second one. You need the another one. So, in PyMol, you see the changes, but then you merge the two eigenvalues, you get the proj 1.xbg from pc1 you get proj 2.xbg from pc2 and then with the help of final.xtc and md.tpr file again by applying gmx naing you get the proj 1 underscore 2.xbg with xm grace now you get the final graphical representation pca study these are two proteins, mesophilic protein and thermophilic protein. If you look at them, they merge quite well. If you look at the secondary structures, the secondary structures are quite similar. So, this is difficult to understand that why one is thermostable and other is not. But when you measure through analysis of principal component, you see that how 300, 350, 400 and 450, the changes are showing clearly more in mesophilic, showing that this have more movement in comparison to the thermostable protein. Coming to essential dynamics, essential dynamics analyze different harmonic and non-harmonic motions in proteins or protein ligand systems which include rotational, translational and transformational movements. As you see here, here it's showing the binding of protein with ligand and you see the relative movements here. If you look at the red circle portion, 
you see the movement. So here if dot pdb obtained from PCA run, you split those files in pi mall. Then you take first 10 configuration which represent the most significant motion in protein. And then the configurations are analyzed by projecting the C alpha motion into the first and second eigenvectors which are represented by if 1 dot pdb and if 2 dot pdb if you look at here you see the movements you see the changes so the average pdb or specific states analysis from pca is also possible the states are representative confirmation of a protein during a specific time scale in md simulation here you see 1, 2, 3, 4, they are states of a protein in a specific temperature simulation. You see that the vector 2 and time are plotted here. These states are determined by plotting the PC1, principal component 1 and principal component 2 values of a protein together along with the simulation time scale. Time range between the two points where the two principal component values overlap together indicate the presence of a specific state. Coming to free energy landscape, the free energy landscapes are often used to represent the equilibrium and dynamic properties of a protein in a quantitatively accurate while intuitively clear way. Free energy landscape can be both 2D or 3D plot in which stability and conformational changes of a protein can be presented in term of Gibbs free energy. So free energy landscape is a plot of principal component, RMSD, RMSF or any changes along with the Gibbs free energy. Protein stability and conformational changes are presented by two factors. RMSD and RG analyzed from the MD simulation trajectory of the protein system. These stability and conformational changes are then correlate with the Gibbs free energy. So if you see the 2D free energy landscape, you use the .xpg file of any two factors as I told PC1, PC2, RMSD, RG as input. Then you run GMX SHAM and you get Gibbs.xpm. GMXM is to plot Gibbs free energy landscapes. So you get it, the XPM. Then you apply GMXXPM.ps. You got Gibbs.eps, which is giving you a 2D map. You put it through JNU plot, and you get the plot here where you have PC1 and PC2 with respect to Gibbs energy. So from the energy here, you could have identified different states, which is wonderful for further analysis. If you look at where you see the blue color, you know the stabilized state of a protein belonging there and you isolate from there the PDB file and they represent states. In the 2D Gibbs energy landscape, each blue patches indicate individual state of protein conformation that appeared in specific time scale of MD simulation. So by identifying them, you could have talked about the process where you correlate the movement of the protein with the functional implication what the protein or the state of that protein might have handle. Coming to two other things, the XPM, this is XPixMap compatible matrix file and EPS is encapsulated postscript file. Coming to 3D free energy landscape, dot .xpg file of any two factors, again PC1, PC2, RMS, DRG as we talked about are used as input. Same gsam underscore input dot xbg it's a matrix file again so you get the matrix file instead of a one file you apply gmx sam you got free energy landscape dot xpm you apply xpm to text dot py the python program you get free energy landscape dot txt 
that free energy landscape.txt file will be going through MATLAB script in the MATLAB software. You get 3D energy landscape and then you go through Maya script again in the MATLAB software, you get high resolution 3D energy landscape. So let us take a look at the 3D free energy landscape where it is formulated by del G the free energy equal to summation of minus K T B L N P A minus P B where del G is Gibbs free energy, K is equilibrium constant, T B is gas constant, P A probability of A conformation of protein and P B probability of B conformation of protein. If you see the energy here, it is red to blue. is higher to lower at the end you see the peaks it's very sharp the map you see at the lower it's called contour map As I told, it is a 3D map. So, in one dimension, it is principal component 1, in other dimension, in principal component 2, and in the third dimension, it is free energy. Very interestingly, from those peak point, you could isolate the state of the protein. So, these are the states you could have identified and you could again correlate them with the functional implication. Coming to normal mode analysis, it is a first and simple method used to calculate the large scale motion in biomolecules. Here you do not need to do the simulation. If you have simulation data, good. If you do not have simulation data, but two conformations, still you could perform normal mode analysis. Typical application is for the prediction of functional motion of proteins. Normal mode analysis also calculate RMSIP in which overlaps between proteins conformation space during successive time scale of MD simulation could be measured. In NMA, Hessian matrix is used in place of covariant matrix in case of PCA. There are many program packages. I would suggest two. One I would little talk about which is a bio 3D package. It include extensive NMA facilities, but it only work on the system which have our package installed in the computer. ProDi again is a free and open source Python package for protein structural dynamics analysis. It is designed as a flexible and responsive API suitable for interactive usage and application development. In in terms of dynamics, what they do? They do analysis of principal component. They do normal mode analysis where anisotropic network model or ANM, Gaussian network model GNM and ANM GNM with distance and property dependent four constants, dynamics from experimental data sets, theoretical models and simulations can be visualized using NMWIZ. It's a wizard. It's a option. So I have given the links, and I would analyze a case study with the Bio 3D package. So what Bio 3D do in terms of calculating NMA? It develop the elastic network model ENM. Determination of modes by automated ensemble analysis method. Atomic displacement plot movement during transition from one state to another. So how the workflow happen? Proteins PDB file obtained from different time scale of MD simulation. This is taken uh, as input and then you calculate residual B factor which give you anisotropic neural network and ultimately the elasticity index which will give you the flexibility. On the other hand, the 
PDB is used by applying Hessian matrix and together with the anisotropic neural network, you get a correlation matrix. When you see in PyMol, you see the modes of movement. Okay, you use the PDB file and the correlation matrix. Again, you could have directly obtained atomic displacement plot where you see the flexibility of the protein and deformation energy. So, these are mode visualization. This is a mesophilic and a thermophilic protein and you see the blue arrows, you see how the modes are there. So, the mode visualization option shows a vector field representation of the modes that is vectors are used to show the directions and relative amplitude of the displacement undergone by different parts of the protein. So, you, when you look at it carefully, by looking at the arrow direction, you get the direction where the protein wants to move with the amplitude of the arrow, you understand where the movement is more or less. Correlation matrix comes from elastic network model. This visualization represents the plots of correlation between motion of all the C alpha in the protein structure. So again, you see the movement. The correlation matrix obtained from NMA can be visualized in PyMol to represent pairs of amino acids which form groups that cover a region within the matrix. If you look at this, so you see the movements. And now, if you look at the graphical representation, you see that in case of the mesophilic protein, you get more of these red spots. It represents positive correlation and hence more structural flexibility. So, with more red dots coming here, if you see, you could easily understand that the mesophilic protein is we use here is more flexible in its backbone than the thermophilic protein. Again, atomic displacement plot, you see, you will easily understand that more displacement happen in the mesophilic in all the modes we are showing, be it mode 8, be it mode 10, be it mode 12, you will see more displacement in the mesophilic. So, when you will use your protein by comparing this, you understand which protein is more flexible than the other. Also, you could study loop movements uh, of this if your loop have some intermediate states or closed state, open state, you could have study them here. The alpha helix 2 and 3 connecting loop is important for monastrol binding in kinesin protein. Kinesin proteins are very important protein which are used for the study where you could develop inhibitors and you stop the function of this protein in case of cancer affected patients. So, it is a anti-cancer drug monastrol. So, here as I told to distinct conformation of a protein are used as an input. You use classical force field for NMA and then NOMAD reference server. You specify the number of modes to be generated and you will generate a movie file which could open in PyMol. Though I am talking about the movement of the kinesin protein along with the monastrol, I did not use that protein. I use a protein called gelsoline and the three color you see here are representing three domain of gelsoline. Here gelsoline is interacting with PIP2. You see gelsoline interacts with PIP2 binds it, but when calcium comes, 
there is a huge change in the conformation and there is a opening up of the domains you see the huge movement if you carefully look at the blue portion of the loop you will see how extensively it moved and that make pip to coming out of the system so the opening actually have a very significant biological relevance in that open state it could bind to actin specially cytoskeletal actin and sometime this results in cardiac muscle contraction hence heart attack so if you could use a pip2 derivative as a drug you could stop this domain movement and without being opened or without being coming into this state you are looking at it would not be capable of interacting with the actin hence there is no cytoskeletal muscle contraction hence there is no heart attack so a pip2 derivative with high affinity binding stopping the domain movements would use as a drug which stop the heart attack of the patient so it stop the cardiac actin gelsolin interaction hence contraction so this is an example of nma movie these are few important links of nma uh, you as i already have given the bio 3d link uh, the web servers nomad and web nma are also popular so with that uh, we finish today's class we have talked about the process of data analysis and different methodologies we used to analyze the data thank you very much for listening thank you